Trade tariffs are the overarching fundamental theme in the markets at present. There are other news strands from corporates to economics to politics, each of which would have had the potential to be market-making news, but pretty much everything at the moment is being swamped by the effects of tariffs. So let's look at the uh, technicals to step back from some of the fundamental news headlines that seem to be swamping the markets at the moment. Regular guest Brian Noble from Trade and Noble joins us now with his analysis of what's going on. I, mean, I don't think it's too much of an exaggeration to say the markets are being almost twisted by this, uh, th these trade tariffs have been put on. Yeah, it's incredible. We're now looking at Trump's Twitter account uh, nearly on an ongoing basis because the guy can tweet at any time uh, of the day, as we've seen over the last 10 days, and he's certainly knocked the market down. He's got to be careful, though. I think he's trying to get the Chinese to, you know, to react, but not uh, to the extent he wants, because remember, the Chinese own a trillion of the US bonds, so they, they can't afford to upset them too much. So I think this is just a game. I think Navarro's comments last night, which rescued the market in the last half hour, uh, is a pointer to that. Yeah, but that didn't stop the Dow from closing below the 200-day moving average. Did I mean this is happening on Trump's home patch? We saw uh, Harley Davidson uh, drop at, I think seven percent down at one yeah. point. Uh, it was on the session, and uh, we got the Dow trading now below the 200-period moving average. From a technical point of view, how significant is this for you? Yeah, it's just actually at the 200-day moving average today. So the, the the Dow last week broke the 50-day moving average, which was which was key. Um, whereas the S&P hasn't, and the Nasdaq hasn't. Yesterday, the, the S&P got down to 2,700, which is the 100-day moving average, and managed just to close to 2715 which is the 50 day moving average uh, same with the Nasdaq and we've got to remember here last Wednesday the Nasdaq after five consecutive uh, all time highs made its last high on Wednesday uh, yes it's fallen 4% since then uh, but we really need to take out I think on the Nasdaq we need to get 69.50 on the S&P we need to take out yes is low 2700 uh, here's, here's the S&P let me just bring up that chart yeah. to show the the break of that 50 period moving average yeah. sustained uh, this bottom line here at the 200 period it did uh, clear manage to clear that and bounce 20, back 2683 so yeah. it needs to, uh, to hold that yes if we do break the, two, the 200 but as you can see in April we br briefly broke the 200 day moving average for all the indexes and half an hour later the markets reversed course and, and, and the S&P went up 100 uh, points from there so you know uh, uh, as one guy said to me this morning wh what would would, would uh, constitute a proper break of this market we need to see be closed below the 50 and 200 day moving averages for at least two to three days so yesterday's trade in the last half hour was key uh, we got down to just below 20 4,000. We've broken the 200-day moving average, and then the the Dow rallied nearly 300 points uh, into the close, closed back just above the 200-day moving average, which is obviously key. Yesterday's low at 24,000 is 24,080 is vital for the market. Um, you know, as long as we can hold over yesterday's low, and if somehow we can hang on to the 200-day moving average, then I think the market, after having fallen 1,200 points in the last six trading sessions, is way oversold. It's due a bounce. Uh, I think ultimately the market will work its way. Lower, but I think uh, you know if, if you're asking what would I do now, I certainly wouldn't be selling as we say in the hole because the, you know the big move has happened. If you get a close then below that significant level, then you are a sell presumably. Yes. Yeah. Uh, down to what level? Uh, I think we'll go back down to the February lows and, and the April lows there uh, of 23 and a half thousand, 23,500. Three, three, 23, um, then if we break that, then we're in serious trouble. Uh, yeah. But I, mean, I think ultimately we will do that on a long-term basis. Uh, I don't think we're going to do it at the at the moment. Yeah, uh, and just to ask you the same questions about the S&P 500 here, we are at 27.16. Again, significant levels to watch. If it closes below that, then where? Yeah, we, look, we got down to 2700, uh, Jesse, which is a 100-day moving average, bounce back to close back above the 50-day moving average which pretty much held the market as we saw in April we had a, br a brief break on that Thursday everybody got excited about it and then we reversed course very quickly so again we I re really need to break the 200-day moving average in the S&P it's, it's an amazing market uh, how, how you know fractured it is with the Nasdaq and the S&P holding above its 50 and 200-day moving averages whereas the Dow broke its 50 last week and then tested its 200-day and broke it and closed back above it yesterday so uh, you know it's a very fractured uh, market you know both and, and Caterpillar have done most of the damage for the Dow stocks. Uh, they're seriously oversold. If we can get a bounce on those, plus if oil can bounce a bit, then I think the Dow will probably stabilise. Yeah, one of the features of the market has been the relative strength of the dollar. How do you trade euro dollar at the moment? I mean, we've got uh, recent uh, lows around about 115 being tested, but there's been a little bit of a bounce on from there. Currently trading 116.65. Uh, yeah, we, we've had a double bottom there with the 115.10, and then last week we broke it and went down to 115.09. Uh, you know, the I, one signal that I follow a lot is the daily sentiment in the 
index, which basically is a reading for what trader sentiment is towards the market. Uh, the DSI for the euro got down to single figures, which is down at 8 9%. Uh, for the dollar index, it got up to 91 92%. Uh, it's not sustainable. Uh, we saw a huge reversal. Uh, got, you know, we rallied 200 points off that. I think if the euro does not hold the 115 uh, area, then I think we're going to go down to the 500-day moving average and the 100-week moving average down around 114 50 which should give it support. So really to get, you know, get going on the downside, I think we need to break 113.80. But with the tariffs, you know, the states it doesn't need a stronger dollar. It actually needs a weaker dollar. Uh, and I think Trump, will, you know, when he came into power first, he said he wanted a weaker dollar. Uh, you know, the dollar got down to you know, having been 103. Then we rallied back up to 125. Uh, he's not going to be happy if this dollar goes down to 112, 113 again. So I think ultimately the dollar will will weaken towards the back end of, of this year. Yeah. Um when, when talking about a drop in equity markets, quite often we look for areas of where the markets are providing safe havens. Traditionally, we look at gold. Certainly, money's been going into treasuries, it's been going into the Japanese yen, but gold has suffered almost as much as the equity markets have suffered. What is happening with gold? We've got a vast majority of clients currently long on gold at the moment, but where is it going? Well, everybody's long gold. I mean, we see from your clients. When I was here a few weeks ago, uh, you know, I think we were up near 80% of, of your clients were long gold. Gold is down $60 since then. It's now at 85%. Again, I, the daily sentiment index for gold is that, uh, you know, multi-month lows is down in the single digits. The gold managed funds for futures trading uh, has only got 23,000 uh, contracts long, which is the lowest level since January 2016. Uh, I think gold is very close to a, a, a buy despite the fact that everybody is low on the market. Um, we see we, we go back to the lows there of 12.36. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a trend line support. So I think somewhere between 12.36 and 12.50, uh, gold should put in a meaningful bottom uh, where we should get a 5 or 6% uh, rise. I think ultimately gold does break the 12.36 the because it's come a long way from uh, the lows of two years ago at, at 10.46. Uh, so I think there's, you know, there's plenty of, of room still to move to the downside, but I'm not a seller of gold at these levels. Uh, so Silver did not break the May lows. Uh, that got to a low 16.05 in May. So far, it's held it with the lows on this move down to 16.17, whereas the go uh, gold broke at a 12.81. So that's what I would call positive divergence for the moment. If silver does take out 16 and we go down into the 15 and a half, well then gold will, pro will probably go down and t test this 12.36 level first. Yeah, go, uh, silver 94% long on the platform at the moment. Um, that's a, an interesting. It's more than convinced about gold moving up. Yeah, that's, that's huge. Um, so, I, I mean, but so far we've held that level. So, I mean, I certainly wouldn't be sad on silver here. We need to take out this 1603. Uh, you know, we've got to remember in May 2011, silver was trading at $51. Uh, it closed at 37 that particular day in, in when bin Laden was, uh, was killed. Uh, phenomenal move. That was a $14 move in, in silver. And now silver is trading at $16. So, we we're, we're nearly had the daily movement seven years ago is what the price of silver now is, which, which is incredible. So, you know, it's come a long way. Uh, I, I much prefer to be on silver than gold. Uh, I think if silver does break down to 16, I think it's plenty of support from 15 and a half down to 14. I don't see silver having a, a huge bear market from here. Okay, all right, so Brian, thanks so much indeed uh, for joining us. Brian Noble from TraderNoble.com with his views on the markets at the moment. Uh, currently swamped by the fundamental news headlines of trade tariffs, but looking as well at some of the technicals around some of the moves we've got in the moment uh, for the likes of the Dow, the S&P and gold.